All right, today Andrew's going to show us how to make Filipino French toast. Woo, doggy! Oh, get away from me! She's attacking me! Help! Help! All right, some very basic ingredients. Sugar, egg, mixed in a bowl. Voila, it's done. Then it's gonna get bread smathered in bread. Bread's gonna get smathered in it or some sort of combination is gonna happen and it's gonna get fried in here. Will that be cool? Not as cool as me eating it. Good. It's Music Monday! I thought I told you berries to get out of here! We, we thought we told you it's Music Monday! I know all you want And the spiral shapes they come you And the currents of the fears they keep inside Howdy YouTube. Hi Diego. Just wanted to give you guys an update on what was going on last year. I kind of fell fell by the wayside in cooking and added this new music stuff. And I just wanted to explain uh, the competition barbecue I had for the charity. All the musicians donated their time. And I was so appreciative of that. I wanted to try and get as many of them up on YouTube as possible. And we did that through the New Music Monday series. That was a pilot series, and we enjoyed doing it a lot, so we're moving it over to the Oli Music Show. Um, I'll have a link to that if you guys want to keep following the local music scene. And that's what's going on with that. That was going on, so we will be doing some more cooking, and that's what we're getting back to. New Music Monday's moving over to another show, and I'm going to be focusing on my charity, AFAB World Charity, Americans for a Better World Through Peace and Education. Project Eco Village is the end goal that will help 2 billion people in poverty. Hi Diego. Howdy YouTube. Diego. And there you have a nice breakfast for Menu Monday. Brown the garlic a little bit, about a tablespoon and a half of oil, uh, probably running about 400 degrees, we use peanut oil. Here we're making some garlic fried rice, using about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of peanut oil, about 400 degrees, and we tossed in a third a cup of minced garlic, oh, nope, we tossed in a quarter cup of minced garlic and a third of cup diced onions. Browned the garlic a bit, added the onions. We're getting ready to put in three cups of 
medley organic rice. Add your three cups of organic medley rice. We count this as brown rice for our diet. And this will give me two one and a half cup servings of garlic rice to go for my breakfast. So that'll give me two breakfasts to uh, eat this great rice with. Keep stirring it around the pan, give it some salt. And fry it up. All right, to go with our garlic fried rice, we're gonna have an egg. Fried egg and some bacon wraps. Now one thing I found uh, using this smaller pan is I actually use less butter when I cook the egg, which is very beneficial too. A little salt, a little pepper. Slide it around, make sure she ain't sticking. It's a little tricky to flip though. Ta da! Ta da! So you want the amount, shortest amount of egg space towards the side you're going to flip because uh, it'll flip better that way. There's less drag in your way. Ta-da! Two for two. Bit messy though. But good. All right, here we have our garlic fried rice. Got that nice garlicky end of smell to it. I'd actually like to uh, get the yolk involved in this. There we go. Got two bacon wraps we made. It's a half a piece of bacon and a half a piece of sausage. Mmm. And they are good. So, a cup and a half of garlic fried rice, piece of bacon, piece of sausage, and one fried egg for breakfast. Pretty healthy. Pretty tasty. Bye, Diego! Hi Diego, how do you do? I've had this food steamer for 
late 80s had put it at 20 some years I think one of the first uh, piece food appliances I ever had as a young adult anyways we're just gonna do a quick demonstration on how to do some sauces for a quick dim sum dinner at home uh, they don't sell this stuff in stores around here but in Seattle you can buy frozen dim sum and that's pretty cool so we're gonna have that we're gonna show you our special dipping sauce and also we got some lumpia shanghai's from Seattle and we're gonna show you how to use the oven as a deep fat fryer and that's what we're going to do for Foodie Friday, for a foodie fun thing to do. We've set our oven to 400 degrees with peanut oil, that's okay. If you use a more delicate oil, you may... Be careful, don't pull that too fast. You may need to put it at a lower temperature. And I'm using some cheap serving tongs as my tongs. So I don't like to get too splattered. And you don't quite need to bury these, to fully cover these in oil. Um, halfway is about as much oil as you really need. I'll probably stop there, maybe toss in some tater tots later on. I just love crispy tater tots this way. Wait five minutes and give them a check, see if it's time to flip. All right, well, all that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and start with some basic sauce. And it, the base of this uh, Asian sauce is lemon and soy. And the key is making sure you have more lemon juice than you do soy. So we're going to start with squeezing half a lemon into uh, this bowl here and then we'll add soy. You'll find as you use it um, that you can adjust it to a different ratio for what you prefer best. But we like a, um, just a little more lemon than soy. If you want, you can squeeze it out into a bowl like this and then pour it into a measuring cup so you know exactly how much you've got going on. Or if you're an experienced cook, you can just eyeball it. But always, uh, always measure a couple of times so you know what your eyeball is looking like. <clears throat> I think I don't have enough soy here, but we'll see. Yeah. Probably a little less than we normally use. We'll stir it up and taste a little bit. Five minutes went off, and it looks like I was a pretty good guess to start with. Looks like I got a little more oil than I normally would put in there. And we'll hit it for another five minutes and see if they're golden brown. Now let's get back over here to our sauce making. All right, that's the base sauce. We've got about one-third soy, two-thirds lemon. If you wanted to, you could add some ginger, chili oil, um, sesame, whatever you want to change the flavor for your different experience. That is the very nice, healthy base sauce. All right, I've got a bit of Mayploy um, sweet chili sauce here. I like to dip my uh, shumai and my lumpia in it. And then I'm just going to stir up this homemade sauce. And on some occasions you can add, when you feel some heat, add some heat to that. That homemade sauce is great. Yeah, they're looking good. Oh, that's hot. We'll let that cool down a bit while we go tend to the shumai. Here we have our shumai and our Lumpia Shanghai. Let's see if I can do this left handed. And it's nice and crispy as it should be. Love that lemon sauce. And then our dim sum. Kind 
go ahead and cut that open for you. Good stuff. Might not be as good as the restaurant, but I didn't have to drive 50 miles. Alright, that's looking tasty. It's got some mushroom and some sausage in it. Mm. Normally you can eat these in just one bite, but you get the point. So if you want, you can squeeze it into a bowl like this and then measure it out in tablespoons. Or if you're an experienced chef, you should be able to eyeball that. Okay, now that the timer's over again, we'll try that again. So, uh, alright, timer went off. Time to get the ac action cam back over by the oven. Let's see what we got going on in here. Hi Diego, howdy YouTube. All right, so you just put it on a low heat, 10 to 15 minutes after you've stirred everything together. It'll melt, it'll liquefy and steep, and while it's doing that, the flavors come together. This is Angie's Marinade and Barbecue Sauce for chicken. All right, we're just going to slide her in here, and because it is hot, I should be wearing gloves. All right, we've got her set for two minutes. I'm gonna pull this forward so we don't get anything too hot and get everything out of the way. And then we'll rotate it over and let it sear for two more minutes. That'll make the skin uh, more brown on the outsides. And we'll go from there. Howdy folks, I just want to take a moment and talk about why I am using the US FDA Food Pyramid Menu Planner. And basically I just want to go over some things with y'all. First and foremost, I am using it to help me plan a more balanced diet. Next, I'm using it to help me track the amount of calories I have per day and which calories are from fat. Now the first thing I noticed when I planned my menu was I had a lack of vegetables and dairy in my diet. After creating a week-long menu using the menu planner where I created a breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack category for each day of the week, I realized I needed to increase my dairy and I felt the best way for me to get more dairy into my diet would be to increase it through non-fat yogurt. Alright, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to Jihad, a Canadian, and his video on how to turn yogurt into cream cheese. That's a great recipe, and check out his uh, video. It's going to be uh, links and annotations, and I really can't pronounce how his name is on YouTube, but that's as close as I got. So thanks again for the tip on that. Really helped me get dairy into my diet. 
Next, I worked on balancing out my grains and vegetables by increasing the amount of garlic I ate through my garlic rice video. Probably an annotation here at the end. And that really helped too because I was uh, eating way too many grains and not enough vegetables and simply by switching to rice I was getting both. And garlic fried rice is tasty. And adding Angie's marinade and chicken barbecue into your rotisserie chicken is another way to increase your taste in a healthy diet. It's only about 14 calories per piece of chicken added, 5 calories from fat. That's a, a very small compromise to turn chicken into such a juicy, delectable dish. And I hope you've enjoyed this Angie's Chinese secret Asian marinade. Now it's out for everybody. YouTubers, spread the word. Thank you for watching. See you later, YouTube. Bye, Diego. One of the first things I noticed was a lack of vegetables in my and dairy in my diet. Was a lack of vegeta, vegetables and dairy in my diet. Oh, you do? Hi, Diego. How's my little buddy doing today? Come on, let's go cook something up with Grandpa. Filipino avocado ice cream. For this recipe you will need an avocado, some condensed milk, What's that? Bad. Bad. Should we cut that off? Scrape it like that. You just scrape it like that? So it's kind of mushy now. A little less than a quarter cup per avocado to the sweetness that you prefer. She does it this way because she likes it kind of chunky. If you don't like chunks, you should use a machine. Blender even. One of them kind of machine thingies. But for one avocado, she doesn't like to use machines. Mm. Yeah, it's a sweet avocado. That's pretty good. And wrap with saran wrap and place it in the freezer. That's simple, folks. Tasty, healthy avocado ice cream. Filipino style. Angie found out you don't have to dry the avocado out, the avocado seed out before you plant it. You can just plant it and they actually grow quicker. And you can flavor it with lemon juice too. Alright, it's frozen, see? Now we gotta let it defrost a little bit. Alright, through the miracle of no patience, time has passed and we are having some taste of this over frozen avocado ice cream. Filipino style. Pretty much tastes just like it did before it was frozen. Except now it's a nice frozen treat. Hey Diego, howdy Thurston County and YouTube. Welcome to the farmhouse show today. Today we're going to go off the farmhouse and we're going to meet some friends, Morgan and China. 
from the Oli Music Awards, and we're going to hang out with them downtown Olympia. So let's see what they're doing about these Oli Music Awards. Come on, let's get the scoop. China Star. And I'm Morgan Picton. And we're hosting the Olympia Music Awards May 5th at the historic Capitol Theater. Right now, you can submit your music by sending two original tracks to OlyMusicAwards at gmail.com. Submitting is completely free. And fans can vote for their favorite band or solo performer right there on our website at www.OlyMusicAwards.com. Votes and song submissions accepted through April 10th. But we'll see you May 5th. Capitol Theater. Oh, hey! What are you doing tonight? Oh, I don't know, man. Just so many great shows in Olympia. I mean, so many talented musicians. You can do, see multiple things in a week. You gotta support the local music, though. I mean, this is Olympia. People play their hearts out here without ever getting any due. And when you think of just all the tremendous acts that have come out of this town, it's bonkers that Seattle and Portland get all the attention. Well, I mean, that's where the press is, right? That's why people are showing up. It's really too bad. I mean, we should do something in this town. Something's gotta change. Whoa, check this out. Artists, hey, that's you. Submit your music to OnlyMusicAwards at gmail.com. Wow, an award show in Olympia. Oh, but I wonder how they're dealing with the genres, because, you know, Exposed Wires is sort of this post-punk, trip-hop fusion thing, but Golden Radio is totally pop-funk, punk trance noise. Well, sure, but they're, they're not even worried about that. They want music from anyone that's making it and recording it, and fans can vote online. This is so great. I mean, it's about time something like this happened in Olympia. Doing exposed wires. Totally stoked. I'm playing Thurman. Nice. But you still with uh, Funkachini? Of course. Stand up bass, fog machine. Sick. How about a uh, Golden Ratio? No, dude. Golden Ratio's Pete's project. I'm with Golden Radio. <sighs> Hey! Oh, hey! Good to see you. Hey. You still playing with uh, Zizifer? Oh, no, man. Such a bummer. We had to break up. For real? Yeah, it was tour scabies again. And Mark just couldn't get over that we torched the third van. Hey, I heard uh, Chrome Violins had a show tonight. You didn't tell me you were playing. Oh, I don't play with them anymore, man. I just, I came to this conclusion that the violin is just so body fascist. <clears throat> Well, it says right here, to nominate your favorite South Sound musician or your own projects, just send two mp3s to olimusicawards at gmail.com. Well, that sounds easy enough. Yeah, but there's probably a huge entry fee, and we blew an amp at the voyeur last night. I really can't afford anything like that. No, no. Entering's free. You mean free as in free? Oli free, baby. That's so oli. I don't know, man. I've burned a lot of bridges. Well, that doesn't matter. These submissions are all judged anonymously. Really? Well, that's too bad, because I've got a lot of fans. No problem. They can vote online at oldiemusicawards.com. Well, they better vote soon, because my tour's booking up quick. And look, it says right here that there's a solo showcase on the 4th and the award show at May 5th, and that's going to be a massive show at the Capitol Theater. And bands are supposed to be playing at both events. But you should submit your music. You should do it right now. I should, right? Do it. 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 <laughs> uh, Adorm? No way, man. Six drummers in two weeks? I broke that band up. Mm -hmm. Ed, what about the, uh, the project you and Molly had going? Oh, that's going perfect. I mean, we're going to change our name to Riddlebox because Molly just dumpstered a keyboard. She found a keyboard dumpster diving? How's it sound? Like garbage. <laughs> Did we film that one? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs>